When we talk about ionization energy, we're talking about how easy is it to remove an electron from an atom. Well, what holds the electron about the atom? It's the positive charge on the nucleus. So the more positive charge that an electron can see, the more difficult it is to ionize. And by contrast, the more of that charge that's shielded, the easier it is to remove that electron. And easier to remove means higher energy. Those energy levels go up closer to the zero state. Remember, the zero state for the nucleus in the electron is the ionized state. So you get closer to the ionized state, the more charge you can shield from outer electrons. Let's look at that. So if we have electrons, hydrogen and helium plus, those are both one electron systems. And they're very easy to understand their ionization energy will just be z squared, the charge on the nucleus, over n, whichever orbital the electron happens to be in. So if you're in the ground state, n equal 1, to ionize hydrogen, we saw that took ultraviolet radiation. And the radiation, 300 and, or 1,312 kilojoules per mole to ionize a mole of hydrogen atoms. To ionize a mole of helium plus ions, four times that. And that's identically four times that. There are one electron systems. The charge on the nucleus is plus two for helium. Plus two squared is four. So you have four times the ionization energy for helium as opposed to hydrogen. Now, what if you start to put some electrons in the helium? We can look at helium in the 1s2 state. Now you'll have the electrons behave as if they're in a potential well, just like in the photoelectric effect, where you had, if energy comes in in the form of photons, if it's not sufficient to ionize, then the electrons will just be excited. If it's sufficient to ionize, the electrons will be ejected. And if you put even more energy in, that, electron goes, that energy goes into kinetic energy of the electron. So let's go ahead and look at helium in the 1s2 state. Now the electric uh, ionization energy is given by the effective charge squared over n squared. Now the effective nuclear charge is the amount of charge that the electron can actually see. So if you have plus 2 at the nucleus for helium, and you have two electrons in the s orbital battling it out, Will one electron completely shield one full nuclear charge from the other? Well, the answer is no. Two s electrons don't shield each other fully. If you look at the ionization energy for helium in the 1s2 state, you find that that ionization energy is not exactly like if it were one nuclear charge, like hydrogen. It's somewhere in between two nuclear charges and one nuclear charge. So, S electrons, there's a little bit of shielding going on, but it's not a full nuclear charge that's shielded. How about if one of those electrons is promoted, is excited out to a 2 state, the 2p, for instance? Now, 2p electrons are very well shielded by S electrons because the electrons have access to the nucleus. There's no nodes in an S orbital at the nucleus, but the p electrons do have a node at the nucleus, an angular node. So when you look at helium in the excited state, 1s1, 2p1, now that ionization energy from the n equal 2 state, how do I ionize that electron, is identical virtually to hydrogen in the 2 state. Hydrogen clearly sees just one nuclear charge, but a 2p electron sees essentially an effective nuclear charge of 1 if there's an s electron shielding the nucleus. So shielding is very effective of low L, L equals 0, s electrons on p and higher electrons. And that influences the actual ionization energies that we measure.